Hey there, all you gutsy entrepreneurs. It is I, Dave Murray, the big guy of Maniacs Branding, and uh, today I guess I want to talk to you about my dad. Dad died eight years ago today. Today's October 3rd, uh, 2017. And uh, he really, him dying was kind of the start of us getting on our path to this whole maniacs branding journey to the whole trying to make the world a happier place by helping all of you guys. Uh, so I thought instead of sitting back and trying to come up with something to say, something to type, some little image and everything else, I thought maybe I'd just sit here for a bit and talk about him. That way you'll kind of get a better sense of the man who kind of got us started and Honestly, you'll get a better sense of me because I'm an awful lot like him. I, from what I, well, actually, from what I know and from what I'm told by a whole lot of other people. So uh, here we go. Uh, a few things I know. One thing that I kind of decided on my own was he was a man who had a sense of honor, almost born of Clint Eastwood spaghetti westerns. That was just, it was kind of who he was a little bit, though he was definitely a smartass. I talk about me being an incorrigible smartass. The apple didn't fall far from the tree on that one. I remember him telling a story about my grandpa when he was, when dad was much younger, them sitting around a table and grandpa telling him to finish his dinner because of all the starving kids and whatever part of the world people were starving in at the time, you know, and dad looks at him and says name one grandpa chased him around the table a little bit there dad also was a little bit rebellious he uh took his motorcycle and rode it into his old high school or into his high school while he was a student there and when he was caught by the principal the principal looked at dad and told him that he was just like his dad. Apparently, Grandpa had also ridden his motorcycle into the halls of the same school when this principal was a math teacher. So, you know, there was there was a slight rebellious streak with Dad. Uh, all kinds of all kinds of fun stuff. I know he and I would sit down and we'd have really probably really good conversations. You know how. There are those people in your life that you just gel with, that you you know your kindred spirits with this person. Dad wasn't just dad. He was one of those people to me. He could relate to me on a whole lot of levels that no one since has been able to relate to me on. Uh, we would sit down, like, so, okay, before I was working in corporate America, I suppose. I was still a contractor, but... This was a main corporate gig. I was paid 40 hours a week, that kind of thing. And I was doing graphic design. My background is painting, drawing, graphic design, all that stuff. And I was good. I was really good, to be honest. Uh, it's not bragging. I went to school for this. I practiced it for a long time. If I wasn't good, I kind of blew it. But yeah, I was I was really good. But I was never allowed to really let let everything fly, let all the creativity go nuts. And I was at home one day talking to Dad about it. And Dad was an accomplished musician. He trained under Barney Kessel. He played with guys like Sammy Davis Jr. and Merle Haggard. And he actually was signed on to play with Otis Redding before Otis Redding died. So he, he knew his stuff. He knew how to play. And he was telling me, you know, I understand what you mean. Said, back when I was trying to make a living, I was playing in hotel lounges. And the song at the time, or, you know, one of the big time songs at the time that people wanted to hear was Louie Louie. All three chords of Louie Louie. Now keep in mind, Dad could play. And Louie Louie, not a very complicated song. So he, he just was able to explain things to me in ways that I understood. Because, damn it, Dad, I can do so much more. And he said, yeah, and so could I at the time. It was just, you know, there was that. There was another time sitting down talking to him about the town I grew up in, Jackson. And at the time, Jackson was pretty pretty down, pretty rough. It didn't have much of an artistic community, and I was an artistic guy. And I was talking to him about it, 
about how frustrated I was about the fact that it wasn't getting any better. Now, today it seems to be a little better, so I'm not knocking Jackson here today. I am knocking it for the past. And Dad looked at me and said, look, you can either stick around here and do what you can to try to fix it, or you can go somewhere else where it's already around, which was one of the big reasons why I wanted to come to Ann Arbor. I didn't see that I could be any help in trying to get Jackson to be what I thought it could be artistically. So, you know, those were those were a couple decent-sized lessons. I remember uh, sitting around with him on several occasions. One of the times, my mom's dog, Dad used to make pretty strong drinks and he made a drink one night he always said that he put just enough coke in it to take the curse off the caffeine and he drank rum and cokes and he had made one and he sat down and I sat down and he knocked it over he accidentally spilled the drink and he got up as quickly as he could to get a paper towel and everything to clean it up except my mom's little nine pound Jack Russell Terrier got there first she showed up and started just drinking it like mad and by the time dad got back out there with a the paper towel it was too late the dog was hammered she was running around the living room diagonally i mean honestly diagonally she tried and jump on the couch and fell straight back i mean we felt awful for her but we couldn't stop laughing and we were laughing hysterically mom comes charging down the stairs saying oh my god what's wrong with her she's having a seizure or something and we're both laughing so hard it was all dad could do to get out of his mouth she's not having a seizure she's drunk it was a little funny wish you guys had been there you you probably would have chuckled a little bit there when I got my car that I have that I've had now for over eight years dad went on the test drive with me and it was a pretty it's a pretty powerful car honestly and we're driving along and the guy told me to get it the guy that was selling the car told me to get it to up to 6,000 rpm I'm like okay I'll do it and so it was just dad and I and we got on the highway I got it up to nearly 6,000 rpm before I looked at the speedometer and it said 90 I just look up, I look at Dad, Dad looks at me, and we didn't have to say a word. We were both a little surprised, so we let it back way off and then continued the test drive. It's a good car. I do like that car, and one of the reasons I want to keep it around is that memory. Uh, another time, we were at a friend's birthday party, and like I said, Dad was a bit of a smartass. He had one half of the room just rolling just in tears and I was on the other side and I had that half of the room rolling and in tears it was a fantastic time I can't remember what either of us were saying but people were just dying and I sat down next to a family friend and he looks at me and he goes my god you're just like him aren't you and uh, even then even before I knew you know I mean Dad died suddenly. It wasn't like he had something that sneaked up on him, kind of, you know. It was just, uh, even before I knew, even before he died, I guess, I knew when that guy said to me, you're just like him, aren't you, to think to myself, God, I hope so. Uh, it wasn't always smartassery, though Mom would get picked on mercilessly by Dad and my sister and I. Mom, one of the one of my favorite things is Mom knew channel numbers, but she didn't know the letters. So she would know seven, but she wouldn't know ABC. So we'd be watching something. She'd come downstairs and say, Hey, what channel is such and such on? And we'd all say ABC, knowing full well that she wouldn't know what channel that was because we were kind of jerks. At the same time, there was one day that uh, I was riding with mom and dad in the car, and I'm sure I was a punk teenager. We were all punk teenagers. But we're driving along, and I don't remember what I said to mom, which is probably a good thing, but it must have been awful because dad never talked to me like this, and he just said very bluntly, don't you ever talk to my wife like that again. I'm going, whoa, okay, okay. Dad was a caustic guy, he was cocky, he was blunt. I have the bluntness. Mom told me that the cockiness and the caustic, I've, I've got it, but apparently it's not quite as bad as Dad used to be. I told you before that he was an accomplished musician, and he walked in, somebody once asked him to come listen to them play and see what he thought. And he walked in, and he listened to them, 
And the guy looked at him and said, okay, okay, what did you think? And Dad, not being one to mince words, says, well, do you want my honest opinion? And the guy said, well, yeah. And Dad said it sounded like shit. Uh, apparently he ended up getting in a fight that night with the dude and ended up with a broken or a black eye from a pool cue. So, uh, I do come by the bluntness, honestly. No doubt this is something that I think is important personally, because who has time for anything that's not blunt? But those were, those were just a few stories from Dad about his life. He, uh, he died very suddenly of an aortic aneurysm and when I looked up what causes an aortic aneurysm it smoking was the first cause and drinking was number two like I said before dad could make a pretty mean drink and he smoked since I think he said he was 12 or 14 so he'd been doing that for a long time uh, his hero growing up was the Lone Ranger so mom told me a story about him walking into the living room once and wearing nothing but his underwear and a gun belt with two six guns attached just so he could sit down and watch that and probably get a few laughs. He, he did have that smart ass streak. But uh, the Lone Ranger was a guy who always tried to do the right thing. He did the right thing. He was the consummate good guy, no doubt. And this was a guy dad looked up to and as I was growing up, I might, I might identify with different characters, but the person I looked up to when it came to fic fiction was Superman. And Superman was the same kind of guy. He was always trying to do the right thing at whatever cost. Sometimes I fail at that miserably, but more times than not, I succeed. I'm kind of proud of that, and I know I, that's that's kind of a big deal, but... Anyway, I digress. For whatever reason, there's a line in the first Superman movie starring Christopher Reeve. And for whatever reason, when Clark's dad dies in that movie and you see them at the funeral, he says, all those things I can do, all those powers, and I couldn't even save him. And whenever this day hits, whenever Father's Day hits or whenever Dad's birthday hits, those are the things, that's the phrase, I think. And it's ridiculous. I have no medical training. I'm a designer. I'm a brander. I'm a strategist. But that's still what pops into my head when it comes to Dad. Anyway, I thought it was important to tell you a little bit about him. Get a better understanding of me. Get a better understanding of where I come from. And uh, he really was the reason that we got started on our path to entrepreneurship. Him dying was that reason. And I wish that it didn't take such a personal tragedy for it to happen. But I'm glad it's happening. I'm glad that we're out there doing everything we can to make the world a happier place by helping you guys. It's a big deal to me. It's something that I, I'm i pretty passionate about, in case you've never really noticed. But, uh, suppose that's it. Everybody enjoy your day. Have fun, hold those people you love, carpe diem and all that jazz, and uh, stay gutsy, gang.